We are, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the Black Gala Weekend, and we Ooh. have Don McTay. Good morning. There she is. <laughs> and Ebass in the house, and they are working on an embellished edition of their Black Gala uh, editions. Actually, these are flipped from the table here. Don did the Hell Witch, and Ebass did Lady Death. That's right. So is it true, the rumor was that last time we had an art celebration that you came up with this concept? Uh, yes, it was at the end of the event, like the whole thing had ended and um, Brian was in the room with me and I was signing all the autographs and he was signing with me, talking back and forth and, and just spitting out ideas and collaborations and he was telling me about his new characters, um, some of which I don't think has been announced yet, so like I can't mention them. And while he was doing that, it was giving me ideas and then it just it just hit me. I'm just like we we have to do a connecting cover with Don and I. It was gonna, it's going to be epic. I predicted that the fans would just kind of lose their mind when just one of us is in a in like a Kickstarter or something. They talk about it online and they go crazy. But like together, like I I was making sure that it would be difficult to buy just one side. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just like okay, like now I have to put them together. So it was like a, a double whammy for sure. And yes, it was it was here at the EBAS celebration last time. And like Brian said, that he loves when uh, c creators are together and they collaborate and they brainstorm and magic happens. And that's exactly what happened. So yes, it, it is true. And I didn't even ask Don's permission. Straight up drafted. Yep. Um, <laughs> I just said, don't worry about Don. I'm gonna make her say yes. We're gonna make this happen. <laughs> And um, yes, there was a lot of cursing of my name over at uh, Rothic, <laughs> messing with their deadlines. So did Brian give you any restrictions, like make it look like something, or did you come up with the whole concept? So we didn't even know where to start. There's just so many ways that you can connect two characters, and I was thinking of all kinds of cool uh, lighting in the background. Like Don does these really cool lighting effects with... Um, like they're like crystal rocks or like lava in the background and she's really good at coloring those and making that that glow really pop so that's where my mind first went and then brian said that this is going to be a gala event and like all those ideas went out the window i was like well, let's just put them in a gala gown like gala dresses it was because of brian that the, the cover looks the way it does because now with the gala you only stand really when you're in formal wear. It kind of just all fell together after that. So like, I was just like, let's put them in gowns. And Dawn, how did you feel when you found out you were signed up for this? Uh... I was terrified. <laughs> because, Explain. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, Eric is, you know, my mentor, Sensei, and I learn a lot from Eric. And Eric um, so is so uh, much more capable of doing these than oh, I am, in my opinion. Right. And so I was scared for sure. First thought was uh, terror and fear. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, how am I going to pull this off? How am I going to, you know, do this? We had done a connecting cover for Zenoscope for a VIP event like yeah. a year or two previously. And it was very challenging because we we weren't we didn't have enough time to mail the art back and forth. So trying to align it and everything, I was just like, oh, my God, I'm so afraid. Um, so I said, I will sign on if you do the layout, which is the hardest part, in my opinion, staring at a blank piece of paper and what are you going to put on it? That's really scary. So I was like, fine, I will I will do this if you lay out where they're going to be and you come up with the plan. So that's that's how I signed on. That was my um, I will I will face the fears, but not that one. <laughs> <laughs> so how much detail is in the layout was just kind of like. You know what? I may be able to show it. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I did the entire the entire thing. Uh, Don likes it when I do like the pose, uh, the placement of all the figures and the hands. And this is an example of. This is actually the the actual layout. Like I do it at this size. Um, make sure that it's always really small because you, you can see the overall image all at one time. Um, continuously throughout the whole process. And that always helps eliminate any kind of mistakes, any kind of tangents, um, any, any flaws that you have in the beginning. So like I always, always draw it really small, um, sometimes even smaller, like the initial like thumbnail sometimes will be like only about that big, four inches tall. So like once I have that done, then I'll come here and start fine tuning everything. So like I have Dawn's side as well, but um, on her side, uh, it was, she was just naked. It was a naked hell witch, and 
I knew that Dawn would want to design her own dress. She's really great at fashion. She follows a lot of fashion stuff on like Pinterest and, and things like that. And she's really good at these elegant designs. And, um, and obviously you could, you could tell um, by her regular edition, she put all these gold tassels over her boob, over the nipple, and it was just like a flawless execution on that. So, like, oh, I, I think you. Oh no, I was I was so in, in all of her design. It made, it made me wish that I had done something similar uh, with my gown. Uh, but anyway, so like I did I did the design, and um, so I mentioned this on Facebook earlier that. There's only so many things you could do with a with a gala concept. So like I knew that they were just going to be standing. So like um, the only challenge with that is that because it's kind of like technically a boring pose of them just standing there, not even standing badass or like sexy. It's more of like a you know like a red carpet pose, and that is got to be the most boring of all poses. I mean. <laughs> For for a comic book, it's it's got to be the most boring. So like I I enjoy a challenge. Uh, I've been doing this for twenty four years. I, I kind of like it. So I decided um, to accept the challenge of trying to now add the detail and the pizzazz, and make it look cool and interesting, even though it's such a boring pose. So uh, after I, I did the layout and the design, I sent this to to Brian. Sent it to Brian. Um, and he instantly approved both sides. And then we, after that, we were able to just jump on it. And like I said, um, I, I did the, the placement of the hands. Um, this particular hand, I believe, an original layout was holding um, a long stem cigarette holder. Okay. You know, um, so I, I think Brian wasn't sure about the promotion of smoking. I I'm not sure. So um, I had to tweak that. Um, the hand a little bit, and and then after that, like we were able to just jump on it. So that's that's the creation layout design origin. You did a lot of heavy lifting on this one. So it sure did. I, I've actually done a lot of designs. I even uh, one of my my favorite ones, besides the one that Don and I just did, I did a Christmas card design, and it was for Mark Silvestri, Michael Choi, Tyler Kirkham, and. I forget who else, but it was like all those guys, and like I was, I was so honored because like to have Sylvester draw on top of my layout is is has been one of my dream come true, and I, and this happened twice now, where I, I designed something and he just came and and drew on my layout. So like I love designing things, um, I love like directing things because I like to to try to bring a little bit of that pizzazz and dynamics. Um, to the reader, so like I, I enjoy pulling things forward and pulling things back. And if you look here again, one of the the tricks for that is is Hell Witch's wings. Like she was a must in this in this set because like when you have something connecting, like her wing comes up all the way around Lady Death and all the way back down here by her hand. Again, creating that that depth, the illusion of of that that depth in space. So uh, I really enjoyed the layout process and the design process. Opposite of Dawn. Yeah, I do not enjoy that part. That's the part that's like really stressful for me is looking at that blank piece of paper and being like, oh my God, I have nothing. Oh no. So um, oh, no. I'm really happy. And then so my kind of like, I I will do, Eric took that part for the team. So I was like, I'll do the coloring. That's <laughs> I'll take that for the team. <laughs> yeah, and, and opposite for me, like I don't know how to color on a computer. So for me, that's dreadful. Like I. I, I wouldn't know where to begin with digital color. I can hand color like crazy, but uh, digital color, I was like, thank God. Uh, and, and poor Dawn, she had to do, uh, after she had finished the daunting task of this connecting cover and then <laughs> lining it up, you know, because one of the key elements to doing anything that connects is to overlap something. So uh, the image appears to be larger than life. It's not a standalone image. You can't just buy one side and, have it be complete. So like it's another one of the tricks, much like the wing, if we can look back down, much like the wing, um, I made sure to overlap. You know, we have the overlapping cape and the cane. So like if you separate it, like it, it, it looks weird. Like what is what are these floating hands? What is that floating hand? Um, so it, it was a it was a challenge um, just time wise c connecting everything. So like after the pencils were done, poor Don had a done color three different versions, the regular, the, the naughty, and the topless. Um, 
much respect. So like I said, I, I hate color and digital. I don't even know how. So mad, mad respect to Donald Allen. What well, can you tell us about this coloring process? I heard it was uh, kind of rough. <laughs> on the... I uh, sent in the deadline and then realized I had a blister on my hand from oh. just all the furious coloring. Oh, um, but yeah, the, the coloring process, I started with the, actually this version. So this version that we're working on now is the one that I started on because I find I always do I find it easier to color the, the body as if there's no clothes on it. So I usually start with the most risque variant and then add the clothes so that I can have the base body, the skin, even though there's three different outfits, three color schemes, three everything, um, the skin itself doesn't change throughout all of them um, for the most part. So then there's always the clothes, there's the drop shadows created by the clothes. All of those things I keep on their own layers so that I can swap it out and move it out. Um, my computer was really old. I have since gotten a new one. <laughs> this really showed what, that I needed a new computer. <laughs> um, so it took a really long time to save every time I was working. You know, the file size was massive. Um, but yeah, so I, I colored the skin in full, colored out this one. And my the concept in my head for this particular version in color was sort of to fire and ice them. So Lady Death's yep. color scheme is, you know, very icy. All the, the detailing that Eric put in, we went with silvers and blues. Her background mm -hmm. is blue and kind of frosty. And then it went into the Hell Witch and turned to more of the reds and the oranges, which of course matches more with Hell Witch as well. And you've, you made it work flawlessly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so I was in communication with Eric the entire time. I mean, all day, all night, sending screen grabs. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And Eric was so helpful for starters, just to have his, his opinions to bounce off of if something looked odd in the skin or the lighting. Um, and so he would send back the screen grab and he would circle. So it was like <laughs> working with teacher because <laughs> I would have all these little like red or green circles everywhere. So here I think you need to move that and let's adjust this over here. And it was so great. So even though I did the coloring, it was very much a team effort in consulting with Eric and all of that too. For the entire project, from the pencils to the layout to the design to finishing everything, um, I want to say that that's probably my favorite part of the whole process was that that literal collaboration back and forth. So like she would send me some colors or some samples or like the first stage where it was just the skin and nothing else. And um, the the one thing I do know how to do is pull some up on Photoshop that's already colored and then go in there and tweak things which I do with every single cover that I get no matter who colored it Sanju, Ula, Nii, Dawn and I can I can sit there and then like sculpt it because like the foundation is already there and that was my favorite part was actual collaboration like it felt like I was a creator working with another brilliant creator who, who happens to be a favorite of mine and it was just magical like it wasn't just you know my side and her side it was like a, an actual collaboration on both and one of the the things that it was a first for me that i've ever done was do color touch-ups what do i call it though color notes is that color harsh? notes yeah no no not at all i don't all. know if it sounds harsh color it notes um on on someone else's art like she actually sent me the the hell witch side and um yeah, I was struggling with something. I needed I needed a second opinion and help. I was not sure. <laughs> I never want to ever give my opinion unwarranted um, to another artist because like you never know when you're going to offend somebody or like, hey, well, who asked you, asshole? Like anything like that. So I never want to step on anyone's toes, but she just insisted and insisted. I'm like, okay. And then while I was doing it, I was like, hey, this is really fun. Like, because it wasn't just on mine, it was on hers as well. And it really felt, and like I said, I've never done that on another artist before. It really felt like a, a collaboration. And that just, it was just, it was fun. There was no pressure. There was no like dread or, or any of those type of feelings. It was just nothing but pure fun. And, and it felt like a collaboration. So I'm going to say that that's probably my favorite part. So I really, really enjoyed that. Aww. You know, and... Um, even down to choosing like the background, Dawn had um, sent me like maybe six different like versions of the of a color background, like a color drop pulled from Shutterstock or something like that. And um, I, I sat on it for like an entire day, like looking all day in between lunch, 
you know, I was like, you know, going to the store, like I was looking at every copy, like which one is going to grab me the most. I was trying to picture all you fiends and sworn members out there, like walking into like the archive and seeing all the, the books, which one of those backgrounds is, is going to pull you in the most. Like that was a, a, a very, very prominent thought when we were choosing which yeah. background. And Dawn was amazing. She actually let me choose. Um, and um, the one you see with all the, the champagne sparkles falling down, that's the one that I thought that was the most magical that I think that the fans would appreciate. The compliment of the lines as well, and that the fans would like the most. All right, so basically what I'm hearing from you guys, this is why these editions are so amazing is because of the time and effort and thought that you put into it. It wasn't just you know something that you did on a weekend without any thought. It's just, you could tell... <laughs> It was a labor of love. How long do you think it, it took altogether with coloring and the beginning sketches? Like, sounds like at least a month or so. So what I like to do with starting any piece, if time permits, and um, legend has it that we blew the first deadline, um, <laughs> which was supposed to be, I believe, released in June. Royally blew the deadline. Um, I believe it was supposed to be due in June. And it was like May, like the middle of May. And... We had we had even started it yet. I was like, oh shit, we're not gonna make it. And we didn't say anything to Brian. I was like, fuck it, let's just do it. And um, so, what I like to do is spend like a good several days just thinking of the idea in my head, and that's that's part of like the actual work process. So it it does count as work. Um, so I I did I did spend like a good three to four days to like a week just just thinking about the poses. And again, it was all big waits of time because everything that I thought of. Um, like I said, it was going to have a cool element, like some lava falling from the back was one of my first ideas. And because uh, it, it, that orange, red, warm tones, Dawn is so good at coloring and like making like the figure pop, especially behind someone like Lady Death. And I was thinking of putting like maybe blue lava behind uh, Hell Witch falling down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for content, we can use that later, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm giving her idea because <laughs> I, I think that blue lava would have looked really good with that glow behind uh, Hell Witch. Um, so, it, it started way back in April, so um, we didn't finish it till I think August first was my August first. Yep. So that that is a long time. So like from the very concept, like concept um, to to turning it in, I think it was uh, August first from from mid May. So do do the math. That's too too long, but I personally wanted to spend all that time. I really didn't uh, care because. I had a feeling that this cover was going to be in, in the fans' mind something that they'll probably remember for a very, very long time. Like a lot of people remember that, that cover where Superman lifting up the car, like his first appearance, like those iconic images or the Joker with the camera. Like I, I was really hoping that for our market, the indie market, that this one would be in, in the category of like, oh my God, like that one was so epic. It was so amazing. It was like connecting and like it was Ebass and Dawn. And I was really hoping uh, to bring that that emotion, that feeling to the fans with this cover. So like spending all the time on it is something that I, I really, really wanted to do. So when we blew that, that June deadline, I was very, very relieved. I'm sure Brian was pulling out his hair. I was like, no, I needed that. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, I'm sure he was very, very upset. Um, I think he admitted last night that it was very difficult to work with me um, in a very kind way. Uh, he said that. Um, so, but I was very glad. I'm very glad that the deadline was blown so we could give the cover the, the love that it deserved. So we're very happy with that. So long answer short, um, from, from mid-May to April, August 1st. And we started discussing it and like planning it in like February. So like discussion, planning, like I know that there was a segment in March where you had sent me some of the layout. And so then we were already starting to discuss. I mean, it was. Oh my God. I yeah, 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 that. yeah. So there was all of that too. Oh my God. She's right. Um, because there was emails back and forth about that. No, she's right. And, um, yeah, I think in, in March, we were like, yeah, well, we got this. June is plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right, and you guys right now are working on the embellished. So we haven't done the gala yet. This is before the gala. This is before the whole weekend. We're super excited to see what, what's about to happen. But uh, you guys are working on the hand embellished. What can you tell us about 
Jeez, what's your process? What's your uh, what we're process? figuring it out right now. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so they gave us the, they were very smart. They're smart enough to make uh, a mock-up. It says mock-up down at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because AP is kind of what a mock-up is. Um, it's supposed to be uh, the first prints that they send to all the publishers and is an artist proof because the artists look at it and they, you know, proof it. Um, hence the AP. And so now there's like mock-up versions. Um, and uh, so anyways, we were testing it out. This was the first the first draft, oh, you can't see it. And um, so now, uh, so the reason why like, we were testing it is because we've never offered um, embellishment copies before. So this may be a very first. This is definitely a first for me. Oh, yeah, me too. I don't know if it's a first for Don, but I think it's also a first for Coffin as well. So uh, it'll, it'll be a, another landmark with this cover. Yes. Um, and uh, doing, doing these embellishments. So we take the line art. I can flip this over now. And uh, we take the line art and we're just going to do embellishments. We're going to take it and enhance it, embellish it. And um, so each one will be a unique one of a kind. And I don't know if you can see the gold. Can you see the gold in there? Boom. Don and I made sure that we were doing that mass email back and forth coordination. It was like, I think, seven of us in this email. Um, we had to make sure that it was printed on Strathmore paper. That is kind of like a, like a matte finish uh, versus like a shiny gloss finish. And uh, so when it's printed on here, it absorbs really well. And uh, so it's perfect for arting on top of it. You know, the, we could do colors, paints and everything because the paper is not glossy. So it is, it is Strathmore paper. That is the Strathmore brand there. Um, and this is what we bring uh, to all Comic Cons and conventions uh, to do sketches on. So this is sketch paper, but high quality. And so that's step one. So in the emails, like if it's if it's printed on here, we could do remarks, and then we can do the embellishment. So that was a, the first step, and um, and now we're here just kind of experimenting and and trying to see what works. The amazing, wonderful Don brought all the supplies. Um, if you get a scan there of like the entire table, this is all her stuff. I and I went and bought more sparkle paint because why not, right? So like yeah. that one over there, I just tested. The mock-up. Yeah, so I tested it on the mock-up and I kind of put a lot more paint than I planned to on a lot of the other ones, just to make sure all the different paints that I brought are not gonna ruin the paper. So like here, see how it does this. Now that's not, when it once it dries fully and is in a bag and board that'll flatten out right but i just so the paper actually has taken more water than i thought it could which is amazing um but i wanted to make sure and so like here i co we colored her i colored her hair in full and eric did a bunch of copic as well just to make sure even though we know the paper can take it um eric is the one who pointed this out that maybe it won't take over the ink but it did so um phew. So now we're just going to start figuring out what we're going to do. Like, I want all of them to be somewhat different from one another. But then also I need to do 30 today uh, <laughs> before lunch. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I, I want to find some sort, get some sort of flow going now and figure out what to do. So, but at least all the paints work on it, which is, you know, step number one. Yeah, Don brings up a good point. Like, um, so when we first came, when I first got to the building, this was why we're here early is to do these embellishment copies. And um, we've been given many a sketchbook at Comic Cons, and we didn't know because like the, the industry was just really kind of starting to make them. And they would print the book, but they would print the title of the book on the top, like is that X Men or Batman? And and nobody realized back then that it left the gloss finish over the entire piece of the paper. You know, so like when we go to mix Copic markers, these are known and made to blend color. There's different shades. There's like 10 shades of gray or blue or something. And they blend really, really well, like magic, really. And uh, so like we've done sketches where we would like pencil it, ink it. And now we go to the color part and it just wouldn't blend for shit. And it was just kind of sloshing the color around, not blending and sitting on top of the paper. And, and it us, looks horrible. It looks so bad. It's just, not only does it look horrible, it feels horrible. It feels like a straight kick to the nads. You spent <laughs> yeah. like the whole day. Yeah. You know, hers would be over. You just boom, pow right there. And you spent the whole day like 
doing the drawing, the pose, the character, and then we have to now sit there and wait for the fan to show back up and explain to him how his book is now ruined, his sketch is now ruined. There's nothing you can do to save it because again, it's, it's like uh, the analogy would be um, to put oil in water. It'll just, it will not blend. It'll just separate and stay on the surface like that. And that's the exact thing that happens with Copic. So when I came in, I noticed that there was a little bit of a gloss on the print and I was worried that that same oil and water effect would be there. So uh, we, were, we were kind of terrified. So um, we grabbed the mock-up, uh, we tested a few things out and thank God it worked. Yes. Because, because Brandy said like, do we need to reprint the whole thing? And I'm just like, oh my God, I, I really, really hope not. That was a joke. <laughs> oh, it was. Okay, well, thank God that we didn't need to do yeah. that. It's, it's working out great so far. Don, before yes. you started working, you were limbering up your hands. Yes. So what is your process that is kind of fascinating that, that you do that? What Generally, I don't. Honestly, it's more, um, I was getting going. Like, I think there are a lot of artists that do warm up sketches. So they'll like do a full sketch and I admire them so much because I'm like, that's so amazing that you're that fast that you've just got, you bang out some morning 30 minute warm up sketch or whatever. And it, it blows my mind. I'm always like, oh my God, get to work. My warm up will happen as I'm working, you know? <laughs> but um, I do notice it when I'm starting at a convention, for instance, the first few lines, the first few signatures I do, they're bad. Like, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. no. And so um, I know like when I'll sign books at home and like say I haven't been drawing yet, like it's first thing in the morning and I look like Corella DeVille, but you know, it's time to <laughs> sign a couple books, you know, and I'm like this. Um, I'll sign my name like a few times on a piece of paper and it just kind of, yeah, it's limbering up your hand. So I don't really have any process for it besides <laughs> your signature, your warm up. Oh, uh, you're well, oh, well because you're... I'm going to sign books. So I, I warm up saying. with my signature. Warm up times. signature. I've never done that. I didn't No, It's just, if I haven't drawn that day and I need to sign some books, right. so I'll just sign it on like a blank piece of paper or whatever, and then <laughs> sign for real, because otherwise I have done some real bad signatures where it's like, I can't even spell my own name. It looks What's like, that? yeah, it's oh bad. God, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> the worst anyway, but warm ups is definitely a thing. Like people warm up their voices, but I think that in like, I, I watched the Celine Dion documentary and like, there are so absolutely, I know, but you can hear her doing her vocal warm ups. And I think for vocal warm ups, there is a little bit more of like a set process or set sounds that you make. It seems to me, um, in art. No, at least not that I've heard of. If there is, is there like a specific art warm-up yeah yeah oh. uh, back in the old old days um before i was born um you would warm up with like loops like loops and circles oh, really? and, and throw lines yeah um to, to do the warm up i've never done it but like i've seen it done maybe i should start doing it yeah so well, they would have like yeah scrap paper and just <laughs> because we were going to be doing our test ones on the mock-up I had, a, and it, it's honestly, it was just a little to do on my to do list before I hand over a commission today is I didn't color to the very edge of the paper and I think it looked bad. So I just pulled out my Copics to just do that real quick and call it my warm up. <laughs> it was more a to do. How does it make you feel to see how passionate the Swarm Nation is for your art? Didn't you say like last yeah. night, I think at the hotel, you or you saw some people are out there waiting for you and it's, it's honestly, I. I've been working for Coffin for a decade and it shocks me every time. I'm never prepared for it. I'm always like, really? Are you sure you like it? Like, that's so nice of you. Oh my God. You know, yeah. <laughs> probably to where it gets a little bit annoying, but it is that surprising and it, it means so much and it almost does become a little bit addicting, like a drug. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. I'm like finding myself and Brian sits on covers for a minute. If you guys aren't aware of that, you know, like, well, I'll draw it, work on it, finish, send, send in the, the deadline or whatever. But then I, it doesn't come out for six months, a year more sometimes. Um, and, uh, so I haven't, I haven't heard what everybody feels about it. And so it's always like, oh my God, are they going to like it? Or are they not going to like it? Is this going to be the time that 
nobody's gonna give a shit or am i gonna see in sworn nation like oh dawn really like phoned it in this time where was her head at you know every time i'm so afraid of that but like i've always like so relieved and pleasantly surprised i'm like oh my god okay not this time yay people like it hooray <laughs> so yes it's happiness all around for sure it's the same for me um and i think that that's one of the main reasons besides we love uh, brian and Francesca so much, um, you know, consider them friends and everything. It is the, it is more nation. It is the fans. Absolutely. Like, uh, they, they just, they, they feed the fuel. They, they feel the flame um, to try to bring our best every single time. And like, pour our blood on our sweat. Don's got blisters, you know, I'm losing sleep. And it's, it is, it is stressful. Like, you know, com completing something and it takes so long like anytime there's a coffin project on my desk and i'm sure it's the same for dawn it's like okay this is going to take a minimum three weeks like just mm -hmm. uh, you know and that's on like on a good deadline and um so it, it definitely fuels the flame and to try to bring it to them every time because they're just um and, and the way that they discuss it on the boards you know they post it and like they're talking about they like this and they like that it, it does feel amazing and um we're walking around the compound today and we're seeing our cover all over and then they brought out the the archive and the all our covers and our books and our prints are all over this building and um it is an overwhelming feeling but it's just like wow like mm -hmm. all of our stuff is here the fans are just gonna d devour it and it feels it feels amazing it's undescribed like we have an event where we are the actual like guest star and it's just like what do you what do you say like yeah oh how how do you really put it into work like it's still i've been again i've been doing it for 24 years and it never gets old i love my job i i, I don't ever dread like coming to my desk or anything like that it's just it's just phenomenal it's amazing and it's a dream come true for sure since you guys are so humble about it i think that just makes it even more oh uh, thank you man because uh, it, it, well. it is it is coming for me from a genuine place like i try to remember each fan's name like i try to shake their hand look them in the eye and and let them know like th through my expression like i hope that they feel how much i appreciate it like it's something i will never take for granted like i've gone to creators they won't even look up they'll sign your book and slide it over and um that's not that's a feeling i never want to give one of my followers one of my fans it's not it's not it's not a good feeling and i, I want to yeah. show appreciation every single time absolutely good answer just please don't be alarmed i do have a resting bitch face but it does not <laughs> you know it isn't how i feel on the inside on the inside super happy and mm. really excited but then my face is you know <laughs> i i just the, don't be alarmed by the resting bitch face <laughs> bitch <laughs> The feedback, it really, it really does bring an excitement to the process, you know, like I, I do work with it with a sense of excitement because it's not art that's just kind of going out into the void and, you know, you never hear what people thought, you never know, did they like it? Did they not like it? Um, so that, that feedback and being able to like see the pictures or when people get their Kickstarter packages and it's like, oh, I got this, this one and that one. And I like this one because of X and I liked that one because of Y and you get to even see, you know, and I'm not even talking about like my covers that I worked on for, for instance, it's hearing their thoughts on someone else's. And like, I really liked this cover and it spoke to me for this reason. And I'll think about those things and be like, okay, so that's that's something in the Sworn universe that, you know, resonates with this collector. And then something else resonates with someone else or they like that color scheme, even though it's completely, like I've seen a lot of people saying they like the purple one. And I felt like that was a big risk to take because it's not a normal, coffin verse color scheme i mean i went pink and purple yeah and, you and sparkly yeah I mean, Don, go i love it go yeah go he, he was like go for your life and i'm like oh my god i mean it isn't even a cmyk compatible purple honestly in the thing so like you know changing the color at least muted it down a little bit because it was psychedelic as shit <laughs> yeah and, and and speaking of the peak that you're talking about like I, I thought of something like like even more wild. Like if you go back and look at that version, there's so much pink in Lady Death's hair. Yeah. 
And sure. to the point where it, I didn't it, think Brian would approve that. So I'm really you're yeah. worried. You're yeah. worried. You're like, is it, you know, is he going to say no? And it's not just a little bit. It's like from mid skull all the way down. It's just like all pink <laughs> hair. And like the way that Dawn colored it and the actual pink that she chose was so like eye catching and like intoxicated. I was like, do it, do it all the way down. It was behind her neck all the way down and it looked beautiful. So, um, it was not vetoed so we were yeah. happy with it anyway speaking of your your well yeah income. just to hear everybody's reaction to it it's like okay you know they mm -hmm. can they can roll they can party in like a different color scheme and it's all right that's that's awesome to see and then you know just hearing that feedback or even even things that are like well this time it didn't really work for me for x reason you know that's okay too it's not like everything has to be like oh my god you guys are amazing <laughs> because you know then i know for next time even if something isn't a slam dunk, at least in the in the body of of the Lady Death universe work, it's something new. It's something different. So you gotta try, right? And yeah. so it's just it's really fun to see all of that, and you know, see what everybody thinks about it. Because then it like you know, just memory bank that shit for next time. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I'm um, kind of finishing off with what she was saying. Uh, Again, just recently, like reading all the the posts on Facebook and online, and people were saying like, "Oh no, it's like it's sold out, and I couldn't get it." And like, um, I'm bummed. I set my alarm, but I was at work, and I couldn't go to the computer or my phone to order it. Oh. And, and knowing that they wanted it that much, like it meant that much to them, that, that they set an alarm. It was on their mind the day before, like Christmas morning. And they and they get there and Santa didn't leave them a gift under the tree. Like it feels it feels amazing. Like that is something that again is it can be intoxicating and addicting, like Don said. Um, and for us to want to bring our, our very best every time. How long have you guys been collaborating together? How long have you known each other? What's the oh what's man, we go here? way back. I mean, Don would know more about it because she worked on on Rothic. But if you want to take it, like we we worked together with JP Roth. Um, back at Rothic, um, we, we did uh, several connecting covers actually, mm -hmm. and um, going all the way back. Um, so, yeah, um, initially, well, I was a fan of Top Cow art. So, you know, many years ago, I think I was 19 or 20 when I first started getting Top Cow art, you know, and so I've been following Eric's art for a, a minute. And um, when Rothick was first starting, we wanted to get cover artists on, you know, JP Roth's books. And so I was just sending her people I was a fan of, you know, so I'm sending her names and I, um, I had sent her Eric's deviant art account and was like, Oh my God, check out this artist. Like you've got to find him. You've got to get him drawing for us. This is amazing. And she was like, hell yeah. Um, and so, um, then, uh, at a con I wasn't at, she met Eric and then she introduced me to Eric. I think it's San Diego comic-con yeah. 2012. And that was the first time I met Eric via Joe. Um, and then Eric, uh, started, you know, explaining, okay, so Dawn, you don't draw a cover on printer paper. Um, it's not <laughs> letter sized. <laughs> so really, you know, fan of comic art, knows zero about comic art here. Oh, and so, cool. you know, I've learned so much from Eric over the course of, you know, all of this. Every time I would do a sketch at a convention, walk over to Eric's table, is the anatomy wrong? <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the eye in the wrong place? You know? <laughs> I love the collaborations for sure. And, and like I said, after this one is done, we sat in the car with Brian last night. I was like, I can't wait to do the next one. Like, what's next? What can we do next? <laughs> and at dinner, we actually um, came up with the idea of doing, because uh, we've done bus covered before, you know, from like, you know, commission drawing that we've done for other people. And it's always good to kind of bring it to the, the masses. So even though it was created for just a one fan, um, it's always nice to put it on the cover and can bring it to the masses. So like we were thinking of doing like a double bust on, on one cover and uh, just, just to brainstorm on the next one. I love collaborating with her. It's always so much fun and um, I can't wait to, to do it again. All right, any final words for Sword Nation out there for the weekend? Uh, my final words is going to be to Brian and Coffin Comics. Like the, the production on this book literally matched the quality that Don and I brought in the pencil. Like 
they tried several new things, even on the metal cards, the little tiny cards. They did this in block, raised ink, like super texture matte finish on the on the metal card. Something that's like a, like a smaller product versus like the high end, you know, ruby red metal edition. It's like it, it is it is such an amazing feeling to see the the art and the quality and the love being put on the production and I mean you guys you guys brought some of the versions but the embossed like you really have to like hold it to really really see if it is it is the next level I can't even believe the quality on it like I think the embossed um chrome not the the metal the regular edition I think that's probably my favorite I love the way they look and I'm very happy with those but like that that new embossed chrome yeah it, it is stunning because the gold really catches the light so like I I really want to say um and thanks to to Coffin and Brian for an amazing like production quality on those like in the new office some of the people already have the books like displayed and that's just a, a great feeling it truly is and um I think as an artist it it means so much to have people care or give a shit about what you're doing like right. I would still be drawing if there was nobody who cared because I just it's yeah. a curse I can't stop but to to not be drawing only out into the void of nothingness but to actually have you guys give a shit and care and your your inspiration and your enthusiasm towards all of it means a lot and is so grateful to all of you for your support of our work and of Coffin and it's always an honor to get to work with Coffin you guys are awesome to work with um I love Coffin's attention to detail and deadlines and, you know, the streamlining of everything. I've, I've learned over time, though, I need to write shorter emails to Brian. Like, you know, keep it to one sentence and then then we're good. <laughs> Brian does. And I'm such a like, <laughs> I'm such a like, so here's my thought process and here's five pages later, you know. <laughs> and so I, I'm learning. Um, but even that is amazing because, you know, it just keeps things moving. It keeps me, you know, my thought process a little shorter um and in all of it it's just it's an absolute honor it's a pleasure it's wonderful to be able to draw for you guys and thank you for giving a shit and and again to to the fans the fiend out there like we have we're here like from canada out of out of out of country and i'm coming in from california because of you guys and your passion yeah there's an event that we can like host just with us you know it's not like a thank big you guys. It's not a big Comic Con or anything, and we could still like pull it, pull you, pull people in, and um, it is it is a, a thank you enough from you guys. Like I said, from the bottom of our hearts, it it feels amazing. You guys are coming out, getting hotels, spending your money that you could be buying more covers and more books, um, and that really means a lot. It really means a lot. So it makes it all worth it. I always say it made you guys make it worth it when we see that passion. When I see that passion from you guys, it's just like okay. Let's keep it going. What, yeah. we, what can we do next? So, like, And without you guys, we couldn't do what we do. And, you know, we couldn't support our families and, you know, be here and actually like pay rent and still be able to draw. Like, thank you all so much. Yeah. But especially <laughs> the, the Fiend fans, you guys, you guys are crazy. You're unreasonable when it comes to buying the books. And that, that makes it all worth it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Swarm. Swarm.